Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I am um, I'm here getting ready for the draft. I've got all kinds of stuff. I'm you know trying to get charged up, my batteries and everything else. Uh, my man, game time could be here in the next you know 45 minutes or an hour or so, and things. And we'll be, from here on out, it's nothing but the draft. It's all about the draft. And the Cowboys had their press conference. I didn't see it live. Um, I'm going to actually watch some of it before and see how long it takes for me to actually just get sick to my stomach. Kevin Gray, uh, Jr., Kevin Gray Jr. posted this just a couple minutes ago on Twitter. And I want you to listen to this before we watch Jerry Jones and crew. Cowboys got Micah Parsons. They got CD Lamb. They got Trayvon Diggs. They got an all pro corner in Deron Bland. They got an all pro quarterback in Dak Prescott. How come they can't be in a position to do more with less? Because no team in the NFL can do more with less and decidedly win a championship. But for all of this talk, Jerry Jones simply thinks that he can get over on me and you. And initially, and most of the time think he can play Cowboys fans for stupid. It's the delusional arrogance, as I mentioned, and the insulting of my intelligence and your intelligence that really baffles me at this point because there's too much information, there's too many resources, and there's too many things to point to the idea that folks are a lot smarter than what Jerry gives them credit for. And that's the thing I want Jerry to start doing for us going forward here. Start giving the people credit for being a little bit smarter than what you wow. think they are, Jerry, because they can see through the BS. They can listen through it, too. And while you're doodling on your pad a whole bunch of nothing, you're doing the same in free agency. And for a lot of Cowboys fans, they are sick of it. And I kind of am, too. Yeah. Okay. So shout out to Kevin Gray on that. Let me I, I haven't heard this one. This is from Dak Attack. Um, he took a clip of this. And again, I have not heard the press conference or anything like that. This is what Dak Attack just posted and said, did he just. Jerry, what's your message to the fan base who's frustrated that you guys haven't done a lot in free agency, that you guys haven't gotten contract extensions done with the key three guys that you want to? What, what do you say to them? Because you obviously said that you're all in and that you're confident in this roster. What, what is your message to them? Well, you can understand there is. A, a, I didn't just understand where we are with our cap uh, at the Senior Bowl. That's something we live with and know like I would understand everything uh, financially around here. Jerry, what's your message uh, to the fan base who's frustrated not, that you guys haven't done a lot in free agency, that you guys haven't gotten contract extensions done with the key again. three guys that you want to? What, what do you say to them? Because you obviously said that you're all in and that you're confident in this roster. What, what is your message to them? Well, you can understand there is uh, uh, I didn't just understand where we are with our cap. Uh, at Senior Bowl. That's something. So you're saying you didn't know that, that we didn't have money at the Senior Bowl when you were running your mouth? So is that telling us that Stephen Jones is the one who is managing the team? I think that's... The Cowboys got Micah Parsons. They got CeeDee Lamb. They got that's what we're saying, is that you are just there as a figurehead. I think that's what's being applied right now and that you were full of shit on going all in but let, let's listen into the press conference let's see how long i can go let's i don't want to waste your time with that music. happened before okay see how long it takes before i just get sick and want to throw up my italian sub Go Cowboys. Yeah, Marcel. <laughs> All right, David, you want to start us off? Oh, sure. Uh, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Questions for Jerry and Stephen. Um, with, with the free agent attrition you've had this offseason and, and the gap you currently have between your third pick before you're on the clock again, 
does that place even more of a premium on needing an immediate return on your first three picks in this draft, more so than usual in most drafts? We had Sabin. Yeah, amazing. I think, uh, um, you know, in general, you know, if you look at attrition, if you talk about probably where it hits us the hardest is, uh, you know, the guys we lost, obviously, in the offensive line. We've had that happen before with Connor Williams and Connor McGovern. You know, these are guys that we picked, and then you plug them in, and they play, and then they get awarded a great contract. Unfortunately, you can't, you know, have more than one, you know, a couple offensive linemen that make a lot of money on your on your offensive line and you certainly you know want those young guys coming so whether it's the three guys we've picked the last three drafts ball and uh, uh, certainly awesome Richards and well let's go uh, TJ Bass all those guys are you know it's time for them to step up obviously TJ played a lot uh, last year and we really liked what we saw there uh, you move on to Dorrance Armstrong uh, you know you have uh, Sam Williams uh, who's certainly shown a lot and certainly been frustrated with his playtime on frustrated is probably not a fair word, but would like to play more. And we think a lot of him, and he needs to step up. And then, of course, the running back situation is one, you know, that we're continue to address. And obviously, we will look at it in the draft, but also uh, looking at uh, you know Pollard in terms of replacing losing him. Uh, you know, we've we've got to work through that. But those are all things uh, that require young people to step up. And we've had a good track record. Uh, as I mentioned, Connor Williams, Connor McGovern uh, stepping up. Obviously, Tolbert, uh, it took him a year, but stepped up and played really well. And I think he'll uh, take it to another level this year. Certainly, Mike can speak to that. And I'll, I'll also add to that, uh, candidly, without any way being defensive, we're very You're proud defensive. of our personnel, very proud of this roster. Very much think this roster, without knowing right now how much the rookies are going to contribute, we're very, very uh, uh, feel good about the promise of the team that we're going to have this year with this roster. And uh, I do principally because of what Steven said. We will have young players step up, no names, that become names. Because names have uh, left and are off the roster. And so those guys have got to step up. You cannot play and run a team in the NFL without counting on this dynamic going on. And so we do feel good about these guys coming in. Is it ambiguous? Of course it is. It's ambiguous if you had a veteran out there. He could get hurt in training camp and you not have him again. So it's, we're in an ambiguous business when it comes to projecting. But uh, to answer your question, uh, I think I'm answering it. But uh, the question is, uh, in my mind, about all of this, how do we feel about uh, where we've been in this free agency? We feel great about what we've been in free agency. What, all in. What are we? Oh, all in. Oh, uh, all in. Are we're you kidding me? With these young guys coming up. Oh, uh, we're all in with uh, these young guys. Oh shit! And, uh, we're all in with knowing that uh, you have to go. You can't have. Uh, a, we've had adjustments. Uh, uh, we talk about. I uh, saw some criticism someplace about uh, Zeke and about uh, paying Zeke. I don't, do I need to raise a hands in this room of everybody that thought Zeke should be on this football team when he had him when he was holding out? Uh, but uh, we had to adjust the contract, which took away from money that could have gone to Tyrant. We had to adjust that contract and give it to Zeke, which Zeke deserves it because we all thought Zeke was going to be uh, the main ingredient for our success over the ensuing years. Since that time, this cap thing has really become even more, not just for the Cowboys, but for the league. And, of course, you've seen a little diminished or uh, uh, not interest, but diminished emphasis in the cap in the running back area. Uh, and what diminishes it is availability. Availability because uh, there are others that can carry the ball better than others that maybe be able to block at left tackle or, or uh, those type things. So, uh, again, without sounding defensive at all, uh, the, the youth, the young guys coming in here and playing are incrementally viable. We're counting on them. And uh, we've had that happen for us, and we've counted on them.
That being said, is there because there wasn't a lot of action in free agency? I know you feel good about your guys. Is there more excitement of going into this draft because this is your next chance to improve the roster from last year? Well, I know that uh, uh, I don't know when I've ever been in a draft that uh, I didn't feel like uh, the players we were uh, drafting are going to be on the field for us and making significant contribution. I don't know that I've ever felt that. But today, uh, uh, you have to have uh, rookies uh, contribute uh, or you uh, aren't getting the value that you need to have. These these are your lesser paid as far as the other relative to... Uh, I'm veterans. trying to listen to more, uh, the but I, 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 I only hear we're all in with these pay. young guys. But that's got to meld in with the overall management or it doesn't work. Uh, because you've got uh, 10, 9, 10 players getting 70% of the money. So you've got to have youth and you've got to have uh, those players that fill in there. And how you fill it in is going to be the difference in the future and, frankly, probably has been if you look at it across the league. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity Pardon uh, me for, for these young people, whether it's the draft. Uh, coming in here without having, you know, which we've done at times in the past when we obviously brought in a Cooks and, uh, and uh, you know, it makes Are it hard for some of these me? guys to come in and play and beat those guys out. Obviously, Are there's going to be some opportunity. And, you know, we do have some what guys who uh, didn't play for us last year. An overshone, a John Stevens who was on his way to making this team uh, before he tore his ACL. Uh, you know, you have a dig, so you didn't get to play. All you know, you didn't see play but a couple of games last year, so we're going to have him back. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of different moving parts that we didn't have that were a part of this team in addition to uh, the draft. And, of course, when we make these draft picks, they're going to have uh, great opportunities to step in here and play. And, you know, you need to have that happen uh, to complement what you already have uh, on what we feel is a really strong roster. Stephen Jerry Tarks with ESPN. Track record of first round success with offensive linemen since Tyron, Trevor Sorter, Zach, and Tyler Smith. What what have you guys been able to quote figure out if you have about offensive line play and getting a quality guy to come in and be ready to go immediately? Well, I'll start. Uh, it's great to uh, uh, be drafting a position uh, when there's a lot of them, quantity. Uh, if you're where we are, of course, at the 24 pick. But my point is, if you can go in and it happens to fit need and there is a long numbers of them in the draft, that's fortuitous. That's a good thing to have, uh, to have happen. So that's very good. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, the uh, uh, for me, uh, I was an offensive lineman. They're always the smartest, the best looking, and they're the ones that end up owning the teams. <laughs> and so it's uh, fun to be able to pick a good offensive lineman. Well, I think the communication, too, is outstanding between our scouting staff and Mike and his staff, uh, Will and his staff, in terms of really getting on the page as to what we want in a Dallas Cowboy offensive lineman. And, you know, there's guys up there that some people have higher than others. Everybody's got an opinion and certainly uh, a feel for I, I, what I, would fit I, I, with I, their group. I, I, and uh, I, I, I just I, think I can't we do a great job of going through. You know, all these guys. I'm really sitting here looking back at Stephen Jones. We do uh, a great know, job. Sit there and, we, we, uh, we, you know, ask you, questions you, and get input as to I, I, you know, I, I have what to would be the difference. I mean, obviously, when we drafted Tyron Smith, you had a Salder out there. You had, we, we can't win with uh, this. Costanzo and guys like that. Who, you know, we can't win with this. Different. Turned out it looks like, uh, we you know, between the communication that we had between our personnel department and our coaching staff. Uh, we I got to go get – I, I I just I just got to go run into a brick wall right now. I I I I am so I am so disgusted and shit on is the way I literally feel right now. This is literally they are pissing on every one of our heads right now. And telling us it's raining. 
I appreciate you guys. Um, <laughs> as I get ready for the draft, <laughs> I don't know why I support this team. I don't know why. 